Good morning, YouTube, BookTube. This is Johnny. Thought I'd do a Monday Reads. <laughs> it's a Monday morning. It is 8.29 in the morning here in Southwest Michigan. It is April the 15th. It is the middle of the month. And that means that tomorrow I start my second folder in my 2024 April paper diary. This morning I am on page 338 pages I've written for <coughs> during the year 2024. And yeah, we're in the middle of the month. And May, May is when my wife and I celebrate our 45th wedding anniversary. Yeah, it's, it's 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 a very it's kind of mystical when you're you're married for 45 years. You look back, and I met Carol when I was like 27, 28 years old, and she's we're the same age. I'm I think I'm oh maybe a little five six months older than her, but um, yeah, to to be married. 45 years, had three children, now they're all adults and married and have their own families and their careers. Well, my daughter, is, she was a first grade teacher and now she's just a stay-at-home mom. Well, no, she does help at her uh, a preschool, I think, or first grade or kindergarten. She does that now because her youngest, uh, Nora Jean, goes to, is it preschool or kindergarten? I can't remember. Anyway, it's mystical. You're married and you go through your 20s, you go through your 30s, you go through your 40s, you go through your 50s, and you go through your 60s being married, and you go through all those changes, all those life changes, and then you're in your 70s. And now we're growing old together, our aches and pains, and the next month we celebrate 45 years of being married. I hope and pray that we can celebrate 50 years of marriage. The other, uh, recently I mentioned, I had a video about Mr. Uh, Bob, this couple that we have known since we moved here to Holland 33, 34 years ago. His name was Bob, and they had been married 70 years. <laughs> 70 years. I think he died in his 90s. And they met when they were really young. And uh, 70 years. So anyway, this is Monday Reads. Uh, I mentioned uh, in my videos that when I do a Monday Reads, it's, it's basically what I'm going to read this week. Uh, and I, well, in the mornings, you know, I'm, my wife left early this morning. That she had to do errands and she had appointments. And so we didn't have our morning, our morning devotion time where we read through the New Testament. And we're going through the Gospel of John right now. And then we read... The Valley of Vision, the collection of Puritan prayers and devotions. We're on we're on the last prayer, so then we start over again when we go through this. My wife likes this. I, I don't know. I my, this is my edition, and I bought this. This came out in 1977. I bought this when I was even before I met Carol. <laughs> I got it in when I was living in Richmond, California. And I left Richmond, California back in 78 to go to Bible College in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and that's where I met my wife. So, we're not ha we might have devotions later on today. Sometimes my, my wife, when we don't have it right in the mornings when she gets back from her errands. She'll say, do you want to have devotions? And 
So we'll read the Bible and we'll pray. You, know, you don't have to be stick to a time schedule. You, know, you can have devotions anytime. You can have devotions in the mornings, in the afternoons, in the evenings. You can, do, you can, have, you can bow your head and read the Bible anytime. So, but this, I, what I, I, you know, I don't really know what to read in the mornings after we have our devotions, read to the Gospel of John. So what I, you know, I got to read something. So I have been reading the New Testament theology by Eckhart J. Chabelle, and yesterday I read. Uh, a theological convictions of Mark, and uh, yeah, the Gospel of Mark. A theological convictions of Mark. So I'm on chapter 17, page 673. The theological convictions of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew. So I've been reading that. Well, I figure what if we're reading through the New Testament, I might as well read New Testament theology. Well, you know, so, and I really, I, I've mentioned this book in my videos this year and last year that I really recommend it. It's not hard to read. It's, it's very straightforward and it's, I've really enjoyed reading it. And also, I've been reading Biblical Theology, a Canonical Thematic and Ethical Approach by Andreas J. Kissenberger and Gregory Horsewell. So I read these in the mornings. Yesterday I read, uh, well, he's going through the Gospels, so I, I'm on the Gospel of John in here. And as you know, Kistenbach, Kustenberger, he wrote a commentary on the Gospel of John. So I read these in the mornings, but hey, we got to read something. Now, I have other books I've been reading, but I'm almost done with all of those. And I'm kind of just want to, I'm not really in the mood to read those. I'm a mood reader, so I don't, I'm just going to stick with this. Read the Gospel of John, read New Testament theology, read Biblical theology, and just call that good. <laughs> because in the mornings, you know, I, I write in my diary, and I... I wander the house, the hermit hut, and I write in my diary. I messed with the computer like this morning. I already looked at the news and checked my email, took my pills, my morning pills. and So my mornings are not always just filled up with reading and writing. I do, I do kind of fool around, talk to my wife. Uh, when she's here, she tends to run, you know, she's always running or running off somewhere. <laughs> Someone asked my wife, uh, what is, what does Johnny think about you always running around and doing all this stuff? And, and Carol told the lady, well, he just likes staying home, reading and writing. And uh, my wife and I have different speeds. She's a Martha, I'm a Mary. <laughs> I'm a contemplative, and she's an active person. I, I, you know, I don't. This is what I've always wanted to do in my life. When I was working, when I was in the world, I just wanted to live a quiet, simple life. So that's what I do, and of course. I realize that there are people out there who see these videos that have, they're very busy and that's just the way life is. I mean, my kids, our kids are busy working and raising families and children and paying bills and doing all those things that you have to do when you live in our American capitalistic system. You got to keep the lights on. You got to keep the water flowing. You got to pay bills. You got to pay taxes. It's just the way it is. And so I know, uh, you know, I can't, I live, the, I'm retired. <laughs> I'm a retired person. I'll be 72 years old, August 2024. And 
So when I'm not reading in the mornings, I told you, I got this book in the mail. I pre-ordered this. It finally came out. Amazon delivered it. This is Macintosh, My Darling by Margaret Young. This is published by Delkai Archive Press. And I told you that I was just going to keep reading this in at least 400 pages. I've read already. I read it morning. Well, I read it in the afternoon, evening, at night. I've read 197 pages of this. And it's over 1,322 pages. And I'm really enjoying it. I, I, I find it... Uh, it reminds me a lot of the writings of William Gaddis. <laughs> uh, and William Gass, it reminds me of that, his, their writings. I, or, I, I, there was a small publishing, uh, Margaret Young was a poet first before she, be, uh, she started writing this novel. When she started writing this novel, Macintosh Darling, it was start, it was starting to be like a, a poem and then expand it, and then for 18 years, every day she spent, you know, like nine, she spent six, eight hours a day for 18 hours, 18 years writing this. Uh, there's an interview on the internet where her talking about writing this. There is a M Margaret Young uh, internet site that you can listen to her interview where she talks about writing this and other things. It's a pretty interesting interview. I think I put it in my video where I mentioned this this novel, Macintosh, My Darling. But anyway, yeah, I, it's it's not um, it's not really uh, highly experimental. It, it reminds me of other things I've read. Um, something like David Foster Wallace. Uh, Infinite Jest, The Recognitions by William Gaddis, things like that reminds me of. But I'm really in, so I'm keep reading this. I did, uh, I did get another book by Margaret Young. She, she wrote a harp song for a radical, the life and times of Eugene Victor Debs. This is more uh, a biography, American history. Uh, when she died, she was working on this and uh, she hadn't completed it. It was supposed to be like a three volume work, 800 pages of volume, but she died and she didn't finish it. But this person who, like her editor, executor of her estate, his name, edited with introduction by Charles Ruas, R-U-A-S. He finished it and put it into uh, this form. So it's not really a pure work of Margaret Young, but since I'm in American history uh, and I want everything I can, get by Margaret Young. I'm a completist. So if I have any writings out there by uh, Margaret Young, I'm going to get it if I can find it and afford it. So this was really, this was um, not expensive. It was like, I don't know, I can't remember how much it was. But, and I ordered her, her a, I ordered her poetry, a small little publishing published her poetry, her two volumes of poetry, which I ordered and should get in the mail. And then I also, the archive, Dalkai Archive Press is going to publish in November her novel, Angel in the Forest, which I pre-ordered already. So when it comes to Monday Reads, I'll read in the morning, New Testament Theology. 
I'll read this book on biblical theology, and then I'll be writing in my diary in the mornings. My wife will read will read through the Gospel of John and, and have a time of prayer, and then in the in the afternoons, I'll just read Macintosh, My Darling by Margaret Young. I do have a book coming in the mail tomorrow, and I'll show that. It's a biography on the poets of the First World War. You've probably seen it advertised on Booktube and Amazon. I did pre-order that, and it should come in the mail tomorrow. I have a book I ordered last week on Nietzsche. Uh, that I haven't heard anything about. <laughs> I don't know why, to me, I hope that I didn't get ripped off. <laughs> <coughs> so, and I have other books coming in the mail this month. But that's what I'll be reading, Macintosh My Darling by Margaret Young, and writing in my diary, watching the birds, I'll probably, I might visit thrift stores this week. I don't know. It, it's very difficult for me to leave the Hermit Hut because I just like being here. I like being inside my cell and I like peace and quiet. And I'm very thankful. I mean, I realize that I, as I sit here, you know, I had a nice bowl of oatmeal this morning and I think of all the people starving in the Gaza and the people in Ukraine being uh, bombed by the Russians. And I think about global warming and I think about all these things going on in the world. You know, what life is like for people in the slums of Detroit and Chicago. I think about that and then I can wake up in the mornings in a nice, quiet, middle-class neighborhood. For, Everybody's really nice, they're friendly. Holland is a very, it's a college town that has Hope College. It has Western Theological Seminary. It has churches everywhere. I mean, there are churches everywhere in Holland. All kinds of denominations, Seventh-day Adventists, Pentecostals, Independents, Sovereign Grace Baptists, Christian Reform, Reformed Church of America. There are all kinds of churches, even around where we live. There's a charismatic church down the block. There's a Lutheran church a block over. There is an, some kind of contemporary church just over where we live. And yeah. So I, I'm very thankful. I mean, you know, when I was growing up, I grew up in a very terrible situation when I was growing up. Very traumatic. So yeah, I, I'm very thankful and I, I know everything we have comes from the hand of God. And books, I mean, I can read. I mean, if I want any book, <laughs> I can basically get it. Even though I, most of the book, I, I rather buy used books because there's no, if you, if you are a bookworm, there's no end to buying books. You could go broke buying books if you're a bookworm and you love books. But also the fact is, to be really honest, the books I like the most are Christian books. I mean, yeah. I mean, I rather read the Bible New Testament theology. I, you know, I read a good commentaries on the Bible. I, I, because I'm going to die, and I'm going to go to heaven by God's grace. Nothing that I have earned or deserve. It's all by God's grace. But um, and the things I really enjoy, the things that I really enjoy reading, are Christian books. And, uh, but I do enjoy good reading. I, I like good, I like reading other things. I mean, 
I'm not some kind of isolationist. <laughs> I, I have been enjoying reading Mrs. McIntosh, My Darling by Margaret Young. And I enjoy reading other things, history of abstract expressionism. I like reading you know, biographies of Frank O'Hara, the New York City poet. I like reading about the Village Voice uh, newspaper there in New York. You know, I like reading all type, different kinds of things. But overall, I've got to feed my soul. I've got to keep my eyes on Jesus. I've got to keep lifting my mind up to those things that are above because life is quickly over. You're here and then you're gone. So that's my Monday Reads, Biblical Theology, a canonical, thematic, ethical approach in the mornings, New Testament Theology by Cheval, and reading Macintosh, My Darling by Margaret Young. That's my Monday Reads. So I'll close to drink some coffee, write in my diary, and around 10 o'clock I'll leave to get my glasses adjusted, visit local thrift stores, uh, right where we live, there's Legacy Thrift Store, there's Action House down the block, and there's Goodwill. And I'll visit those this morning when I'm out running around in our little neighborhood, in our little small Midwest town. So I hope you had a good reading weekend. I do pray that you have a good reading week. And yeah, until next time, if there's a next time, may the Lord come quickly. Bye.